Hello, hello, Hannah Levin here with Heartfelt Wellbeing, and this is a Tuesday talk with Hannah focused on raw versus cooked foods. So this is a question that I get a lot in practicing Ayurveda is people say, what about raw foods? Because a lot of things are focused on cooking foods in Ayurveda. And so we all are constantly in the flow of what's kind of in popular culture and what individuals have done to heal at certain times. So we get things like, you know, reports like that somebody healed cancer by eating a raw foods diet or that somebody went raw and then healed all of their um, health issues. And so we in our Western minds not really recognizing that no one size fits all get caught up in this thinking that we should do what somebody else is doing. So I think you can see where I'm going here, which is the beauty of Ayurveda is that each of us are our own unique universe and that we're made up of different amounts of the five elements that then combine into dosha. And these energies of the dosha really inform how we best live our lives. And that's a very individual thing taking also into consideration the season and the life stage that you're in. So I want to go through some thoughts and sharings about raw foods and about cooked foods and then come back around to um, what that might look like for you as you, your unique, your unique self. One of the things we need to understand when we look at raw versus cooked foods is that it really relies on digestive fire. So as we're coming into, I'm recording this in the middle of May, um, as we're coming into warmer and warmer weather in the Northern Hemisphere, we experience more and more fresh food in our environment that we could be eating raw, right? So as we get into June, July, August, we're gonna have more and more like fresh vegetables and fresh fruit coming into our environment. Remember one of the guidelines for living an Ayurvedic lifestyle is that we're eating in season. So if you are going to be looking at eating raw, this is the time of year when, when that is more of a possibility. However, it also relies on your constitution and imbalances and life stage as well. So just keep in mind that this is all, all individual. So we've all heard these claims that are floating around there like that being on um, like having raw foods or juicing things like that are are really healing and I want to add the caveat that it depends on who you are right and what what will work for you so the mass media has kind of confused us um, and we've lost this ancient wisdom that like our great-grandparents had and definitely Eastern traditions had about understanding our individual digestive fire. So as always, whenever we're looking at anything, we want to ask the three main questions of Ayurveda. I bet some of you can tell me what those are. I'll share them here if you're not, if you're not familiar with them. So the three questions that we always want to ask when we're saying should a person eat raw food or should a person do anything or um, I get asked a lot like what does Ayurveda have to say about blank whatever it is raw food coffee chocolate bananas whatever it is right so we always want to ask for who who are we talking about so that we can understand the context of that person what is their doshic makeup what season is it what are they going through right now in their lives? What season of their life are they in? What life stage? So for who? 
Second question is when. So that ties into a couple things I just said. So what season is it? What is their life stage? Um, what time of day are we talking about doing whatever this is? And then the third question is how much? So some things can be tolerated well at small amounts, but not so much at large amounts. And our, our Western tendency is to think if a little is good, more is better. <laughs> and that's not actually the case a lot of the time. So for who, when, and how much are the three questions we always want to ask. So raw foods are touted as being great for, um, for some reasons because they're very high in what we call prana or life force. There's a lot of energy in raw foods, but they're also very hard to digest. So if you don't have the digestive strength to break down the raw foods, then they're doing you more damage than good. If you can't digest and assimilate them, then you're not getting that vital energy. You're not elevating your prana. You're weakening your body by eating raw food. And so one way that you can see if you have this relationship with raw food is if you eat something like a salad and then you experience digestive symptoms like gas and bloating, you might also experience things like fatigue. So after eating some raw food that you feel really tired. Um, and you also might um, experience that you have mental issues <laughs> after eating raw food, which is that you might feel scattered or anxious. I noticed that this happened to me once I started learning Ayurveda. I was like, oh, wow. I get really kind of scattered if I have a lot of raw food. And then it can also lead to insomnia. So you can impact your sleep by eating too much raw food if you don't have the digestive fire for it. So the other thing is that some raw foods actually have anti-nutrients in them until they're cooked. Um, if you're interested in exploring this more and different methods of cooking, I do recommend the book, The Plant Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry, which isn't Ayurvedic at all, but he really explains um, how plants are, um, are aligned with the different preparations for them to be beneficial for us to consume. We can't just eat them however we want, whenever we want. <laughs> Um, so in, from an Ayurvedic perspective, we're always looking at this balance or the conversation between Agni, which is the digestive fire that I've been talking about, and Ama, which is the toxins or gunk that gets built up in the digestive tract, which we could also say is undigested food stuff. So when we're eating things, if we don't have the digestive strength to digest and assimilate the raw foods, then we are creating more ama in our systems. And so this is really interesting. They're, so in digestible foods, which raw foods could fall into if you don't digest them well, are considered poison from an Ayurvedic perspective. That makes sense. You're poisoning your system. And what's interesting is that like over time, this builds up and it leads to disease and we wouldn't ever think like, you know, eating a bunch of salads would cause disease, right? We have the cultural stigma of if you're healthy, you eat salad. This actually was my story is that I was like, I'm going to be super, super healthy. I do not have the digestive fire to digest lots of raw foods <laughs> year round, especially, and um, was eating lots and lots of salad and basically um, made myself sick. I lost my um, ability to have a, well, I became incredibly constipated and then lost my ability to have a natural bowel movement. My peristalsis went away. So this is like live and learn. This is firsthand, very like 
very much a part of my story in finding Ayurveda. When I first went to see um, my teacher Vishnu, he said, don't eat anything raw for a year. And I didn't for like a year and a half and it rebuilt my digestive system. So you can see that our cultural ideal of what is healthy, eat some salad, doesn't work for everybody. And that sometimes it's doing the opposite, which is the healing wisdom of Ayurveda balance with the wisdom of opposites that ends up really healing us. So many cooked foods, um, well, I'll get to cooked foods in a moment. One thing to think about is if something is hard to chew, it's going to be hard to digest. And we want to make sure that things are chewed very well before we swallow them. And a lot of us don't chew our food very well. And so um, I heard somebody say the other day at the NAMA conference that I was at, um, she said, I always tell people you have teeth in your mouth. There are no teeth in your stomach. So you really want to chew your food really well. So um, that's another thing. If you're not a good chewer, you definitely don't want to be eating raw food because that over time also weakens your agni and leads to digestive issues, which eventually lead to disease. So, um, so the measure of good food is not just its content. So um, we also, because of our uh, research abilities now and our... Um, abilities to pull things apart, like the constituents of foods, the vitamins, the minerals, the, you know, carbs, the protein, all of these things, we can just pull them apart. It's really important for us to look at, like, it's not just, it's not that the cucumber contains this and so then you get it. It's really about what's the interaction with your body and your being, your cellular intelligence. So it's very sterile for us to think about we're just taking in these vitamins and minerals and nutrients and we're not taking into consideration the interaction that it's having with our bodies. We don't know that we're getting those things unless we are really tuned into our digestive fire and the season and our constitution. So um, you can be eating the most beautiful food in the world, but if you don't have the digestive strength to break it down and assimilate it and good chewing to go along with it, then you're not gonna get the benefit of it. And this is where Ayurveda is really brilliant is that we really look at each person individually and say, what, what is going on with you and how do we nourish you, right? And that changes over time. It changes as um, we heal from imbalances. It changes as we go through different seasons and it changes through our life stage as well. So there's a lot to take into consideration and it might sound like a lot to think about, but once you get the this perspective down of Ayurveda, it becomes second nature to be able to think, you know, who am I? What's the weather today? What's the season? What life stage am I in? It becomes very, very automatic. So um, if you know your constitution and you know that you're pitta predominant and you don't have um, a lot of imbalances, you are more likely to be able to digest raw food. So a lot, um, a lot of folks that are like, oh yeah, I love salads and they make me feel great and I have great poops and everything, they're pitta predominant. And the people that have written books about um, how raw food diet cures things like cancer or um, you know, it's their key to lose weight, they are pitta predominant. So you can look at any of those folks and be like, yeah, it works for you because you're pitta predominant. And if you are pitta predominant, you can experience a lot more benefit from eating raw. However, we want to really focus on eating in season. So again, we want to think about just now coming into more and more raw in the diet, if you can handle it, and, um, and really not eating raw foods um, 
after the fresh raw foods are gone in the in the fall. So once the weather gets cooler, we're not putting that coldness in our digestive system. The strength from our, our digestive fire follows the strength of the sun. So we know that our digestive fire is strongest from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We wanna eat our largest, most complex meal in the middle of the day, so for lunch. So we know these things. We can also take into consideration that even though digestive fire isn't its strongest in the summertime, when we're eating raw, ideally we're eating foods that have been ripened in the environment. So there's more warmth, there's more light, there's more sun, and that Agni is coming into the food and then we're eating it. So it's like it's coming with its own little Agni package into our bodies which doesn't rely simply on our digestive fire. It comes with some additional um, support when we're eating in season, local, vine ripened. You know, we, we don't want to be eating foods that were harvest unripe, harvested unripe. Um, so those are some good things to think about. So Pitta people, again, have the strongest digestion and can tolerate more raw food than other doshas. So things like juicing um, and making smoothies, um, those things can be helpful for making raw foods more digestible if you don't have as strong of uh, the digestive fire. However, you can still experience some... Um, either digestive distress or feeling anxious or flighty, having insomnia, if you're doing too much of those of those things. So again, just be careful if you're more vata predominant, especially, but also kapha because the raw can really slow things down. Kapha digestion is already slow. So the, the raw, cold, rough qualities can really slow things down for kapha. Um, so you still, you always want to be checking in with the Agni. Um, there's also some claims that raw food can be a path to spiritual development. And this is because of the lightness that it brings in, the cold, dry, light, mobile, subtle, rough qualities of Vata come in. And it can make us feel kind of like... Um, uh, like we're kind of floating through the world. <laughs> um, and that can feel really enjoyable to some people, especially if they're vata imbalanced already. So it's interesting because a lot of people that are drawn to raw food diets initially are vata predominant that are um, feeding an unhealthy craving for lightness and ungroundedness and elevation of prana, when in fact, they would do well to eat more cooked and grounding food. It's just interesting to think about. Um, so the um, so it can be uh, something that is pursued kind of like an altered state of consciousness if you're eating more like a raw foods diet. Um, again, that's only going to be beneficial uh, over time for somebody who is pitta predominant and has healthy Agni, doesn't have a lot of imbalances. So another um, danger of raw food is that um, if food is not cooked, it can contain parasites. Now you might be thinking, oh, that doesn't matter because we live in the West and everything's hygienic. That's not the case. A lot of us have parasites um, and we don't know it. And so this is something else um, that continues in industrialized countries um, and, and can be really important, especially if you have health struggles already. So um, a few tips, if you are eating raw, you definitely wanna chew your food more, follow the solar energy. So you're having, if you're having a lot of things um, raw, that might be better at lunch rather than dinner um, or breakfast. However, you can see how that feels in the height of summer. You might be able to do it if there's enough warmth in your environment. Um, and then you can also 
um, use things like salad dressings are kind of brilliant. So something like an olive oil base is adding the moisture and lubrication to your salad, that heaviness um, and moistening of the oil is really helpful for the dry and rough qualities. And then also adding spices, even simple things like black pepper, mustard is put into a lot of salad dressings. Honey is added to salad dressings as well. These are all warming and supportive to, to digestive strength. So adding things like that, basil, um, I'm trying to think of other things, tarragon, marjoram. These are spices that you might put in a salad dressing. They're really helpful for supporting Agni while you're breaking down and uh, digesting um, raw foods. So some support for having cooked foods overall is that cooked foods are more digestible and they're easier to absorb the nutrients and they don't take as much energy away from our other bodily functions. Especially those of us that are Vata, we might notice that our Vata predominant, um, we might notice that after we eat, we tend to get cold. And this is evidence of the body sending energy to the digestive tract to be able to perform its functions. If that happens to you a lot, you want to make sure that you're supporting your Agni. If we are constantly asking like all of our body resources to go towards digesting our food, there's a lot of other things that are not getting the energy and resources that need to take place in our bodies for optimal health as well. So making sure that you're not asking too much of your digestive system so at the expense of other, other systems in your body. So often vitamins and minerals are more bioavailable when they're cooked. And this is meaning, meaning lightly cooked. So we want to think about, especially this time of year, lightly steaming or sauteing vegetables. Remember, most of what we're eating is vegetables, plant-based diet. And if you are having some animal protein or other things, it, it should be smaller amounts, right? So as we're cooking, we want to lightly steam or saute this time of year so it's a lighter preparation. And then add spices to help with the digestion as well and absorption. So we, we don't want to overcook food making things mushy and overcooked is not beneficial either. So that also kills the prana. So um, having too much prana or not enough prana, neither of those things are helpful for us. So it's kind of the Goldilocks principle, right? Not too much, not too little, just right. So we want in general to have enough support from our food preparation cooking to help us assimilate the nutrients without losing the nutrients or asking too much from our digestive fire. So um, uh, we also can, the prana gets killed when things sit as leftovers. So ideally we want to cook things lightly during this time of year and then eat them within 24 hours of their preparation. After that, the food begins to lose its prana and then it's not doing us a whole lot of good either. Again, do what you can where you are with what you have. If you make all your meals for the week on Sunday, like, good for you. At least you're not going through the drive through right? We want to take our wins where we can get them. It is best if you're not going to be eating your food for a few days to freeze it rather than let it sit in the refrigerator. So those are some, some little tips there. And then again, keeping in mind that foods that are cooked together generally digest well together. So when they're in a pot together, um, as Dr. Robert Svoboda says, foods that are cooked together work out their differences in the pot. That can be very helpful for us if we're experiencing digestive issues that we make one pot meals and, um, and then eat what is, what is already cooked together. So as you're navigating this um, kind of inner conversation for yourself, you might think about 
what is your predominant dosha? And if you're not sure, go to my website, heartfeltwellbeing.com and take the dosha quiz. It'll tell you what your predominant dosha is. And then you can see, you know, do you also struggle with digestive issues? If you do, you might want to tend towards more cooked foods. We want to have space in between meals, no snacking, allow the digestive system to have the support it needs both through digestive fire and space and time. So looking at what are your tendencies coming into this season of more and more fresh available, you also want to take into consideration your life stage. So if you are um, kind of between the ages of 25 and 50 or um, still in menstruating years as a woman, you're in pitta stage of life. You'll have stronger digestion as long as you're supporting it and not asking it to do too much, not skimping on sleep or um, other things that balance you. Right? So we want to move our bodies, get good sleep, have healthy relationships, right? Like decrease stress. All of these things affect digestion. And so during pitta stage of life, you might be able to also um, have more raw, especially during the, the summertime. As you move into postmenopausal years, you're in vata stage of life. You will have more dryness naturally in your body. And that can be a time when you don't eat as much raw. Now, it's all relative, right? Like maybe you're pitta predominant. You went through pitta stage of life eating tons of salads and smoothies, and then you hit vata stage of life, and then you're like this doesn't feel good to me anymore. I'm incredibly constipated or, you know, I just can't sleep anymore. All these things. Then you might look at how much, how much raw, there's lots of other um, variables in the picture. But for today's talk, just looking at raw versus cooked foods, you might experiment with having more warm, warm cooked foods in, in your meal plans um, and see how that feels. So I hope that this has been helpful, educational, inspiring. I would love to hear what you are thinking about trying for, for yourself. If you have been eating mostly cooked all through the winter and through the spring, as things become available in your environment, and again, that depends on where you live and you know what's growing, um, you can start incorporating a little bit of raw and see how you feel. The power of all of this lies in your own noticing. So notice, do you have any repercussions, body, mind, spirit, after eating raw? Maybe you can have a salad, you know, every other day, but if you have it every day, that doesn't feel good, right? So keep in mind those questions for who, when, and how much, and keep exploring. And then as you continue to heal, next summer might feel really different. So have fun, explore raw versus cooked foods for you, and keep in mind that we're all different and we all need different things for nourishing ourselves depending on who we are, our own magical universe that we are. All right, take care. Let me know if you have questions. Be well.